welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where we analyze specific stock investment ideas. Now, if you like dividends, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you like dividends, you're going to, I think, I hope, I hope you're going to like the company we're going to talk about today. So today we're going to talk about BCE. Uh, for the Canadians out there, everybody knows this stock. It's Canada's largest telecom provider, currently offers a 6% dividend yield and trades at about 17 times earnings. So quick introduction, as I said, BC is Canada's largest telecom provider. They've got three business lines, wireless, wireline, and media. It's a blue chip dividend stock here in Canada, currently yields about 6%. So what are the highlights? It's stable, low growth top line, typically in the low single digits, uh, high margins and profitability. BC operates in a regulated industry in Canada that have uh, significant barriers to entry. And it generates strong free cash flow generation, which is what funds the dividend. And it also has reasonable leverage, uh, you know, currently around a little less than three times net debt to EBITDA. And for a business with as stable as BC, I think that's not bad. So this video is going to review BCE to see if it represents an attractive opportunity for investors. And disclosure, uh, Ostrich, I don't own this one, but I've been thinking about it. Here we go. So here's a bit about the business. As I said, BCE is Canada's largest communications company. You can see the three segments here. I snipped this from their annual report. And uh, if we talk quickly about the three uh, business lines, you can see here uh, and some of the customer connections listed below. So the wireless division, cell phone, cell phone plans, has 9 billion of revenue, EBITDA of close to 4 billion and 10 million subscribers. Wireline. Uh, this is the internet, TV, and landline, believe it or not. There's still 2.7 million landline customers for BC. Uh, that's in the wireline segment. So 9 million total subscribers, 12.4 billion of revenue, 5.4 billion of EBITDA. And, and then their media division, uh, they own uh, CTV, TSN, Showtime, BNN Bloomberg, and maybe one day they want to acquire ostrich investing. They've got revenue of 3.2 billion, uh, EBITDA of 850 million. Now note, 65% of their revenue comes from advertising. And so when we think about COVID, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And then lastly, just point out, so you can see in their customer connect connections overall, they're growing at 1.3%, but you can see satellite TV, they're losing about 8% a year. Uh, landlines in terms of telephone, they're losing about 9% a year. And so those two areas are a real drag on what otherwise is driving growth. So IPTV subscribers and wireless subscriber growth of about 4% there. And then as an added bonus, how can I forget? Um, BC also owns 28% of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. So the Leafs and the Raptors and 18% of the Montreal Canadiens. I think they should pick a team to be honest. Okay, here's the share price chart over the last five years, and it's really traded in a range. It's traded, you know, between $45 and $65. You can see sort of, uh, here's 52 here. Uh, so it's largely been above 50. It's dipped down below 50 a few times, and most recently here at the, the uh, peak of COVID, they did their COVID swan dive here. You can see it was perfectly set up, perfectly executed. And the stock settled back down, you know, sort of in the middle of their five-year trading range, trading around five, $55, $56.56. So let's take a look at the financials. And we're going to just get a few of these bubbles up here. So revenue, like I mentioned before, uh, low single digit. You can see 20, almost $24 billion of revenue, 23.5 the year before and 22.8 the year prior. So just steady, low growth. Um, and he, again here, the wireless internet growth is offset by the landline and cord cutting. EBITDA, they've got 40% margins. You can see here, that's nice. They've also got 18% ROE, and I know that doesn't fit in an, R, in an EBITDA section, but I put it there anyway, and that's, that's twice as nice. That's really good. And 6% growth in 2019, and then just put a question mark here, and we'll talk about it um, later in the video, impact on EBITDA for 2020. And then free cash flow. 
uh, you can see here cash flow from operating activities has been steady and slightly growing from about 7.4 billion up close to 8 billion but there's meaningful capital expenditures in this business they've got to continue to invest um, in new fiber to the home upgrading their uh, wireless network uh, lte and 5g and so you can see historically here it's about 4 billion a year that bce has been spending on capex and that works out to about uh, you can see below here, 17% uh, of revenue, more or less. KPIs, um, thought it would also just be interesting to point out a few of their key performance indicators. On the wireless side, they've got a, a measure called uh, average billings per user. And currently it's $68.32. So it makes sense if you think about it. You've got a total number of customers and here's the average amount you get to bill them each month. Um, and churn is another one. We've got 1.4% churn. You can see that number here. Now just note, this is the total number of uh, subscribers that deactivate each month divided by the total. So it's a monthly stat. And then the net activations, you can see here, 515,000 net activations. So if you add up all the new subscribers, uh, less the ones that leave them, that's what you get in terms of growth. That's on the wireless side. On the wire line side, um, it's again, it's net activations is sort of the key stats here. You can see on the internet side, they've got 136 net activations. And on the TV side, it's sort of flat. So they've got growth on the IPTV side, but they're losing satellite customers. And then I didn't even put the voice lines on the chart, um, but they are decreasing. I think they've still got a little over 2 million subs uh, but they're decreasing at about 9% a year, which makes sense. I don't know too many people that have uh, home phones anymore. Dividend. All right, here's what we came to talk about. Uh, so you can see BC's got a great track record of growing their dividend. Dividend was $1.46 back in 2008. And I imagine if you go back and do the math, the payout ratio has really gone up over that time as well, but still pretty nice growth. Um, and the one thing they point out here is their free cash flow payout ratio is targeted within the 65 to 75% target range. And so that's their targeted payout ratio. Now, this is from BC's 2020 guidance presentation, which was in February. And as at the release of their Q1 and subsequent to COVID, um, management's come out and said, hey, dividend safe um, for now with all the caveats. Uh, but the payout ratio for 2020 is going to be outside the target. So I think, you know, we'll talk about what that might do to their free cash flow, but I think they're suggesting free cash flow is going to be down this year. Uh, they're going to maintain the dividend, but don't expect it to come in that normal 65 to 75% range. Guidance. Uh, so again, this goes back to their February presentation pre-COVID. Um, just to give you a flavor of the type of business and growth you're looking at here. So 2020 guidance, one to 3% revenue growth. So, so very low, um, but positive. Adjusted EBITDA growth, step up, you get two to 4% there. Woo. Uh, capital intensity again here, which is CapEx divided by revenue in that 17% range. Uh, earnings per share, free cash flow growth of three to 7%. And there's, there's dividend. And of course their payout ratio policy. And then of course, after their Q1, uh, they removed their guidance. So you can go ahead and just uh, take this slide and throw it in the trash. Segment impact. So I thought we should talk about with COVID, what does that mean? You know, what do we think it means for their three key business lines? So for wireless, they've told us they're continuing with the deployment of 5G. They've got lower subscriber ads, so lower new subscriber growth. And think about that the store closures, all the kiosks where you'd go and sign up for a cell phone plan have been closed. So growth is a little lower. Average billing per unit uh, per user, sorry, is also down. It's about 3%. And part of that was expected because we moved to more unlimited data plans. And, and BC had talked about that in the past that they might see ABPU come off a little bit. Uh, but I think that's been exacerbated a bit by COVID. BC has offered some, um, some discounts. Uh, on overages to customers and uh, they mentioned that there's been reduced business travel which can drive up uh, uh, average billing per per user on the positive side 
uh, lower churn. So customers aren't switching as much during COVID. For wireline, uh, again, BC is continuing fiber to the home build outs. Uh, and as a general theme, they've maintained their CapEx guidance. So I think they, what they've come out and said is now is not the time to cut back on spending. They want to make sure that Canadians have access to um, good network speeds. And the $4 billion of, of CapEx that was sort of um, expected had coming into this year hasn't been cut. So they're moving forward with that. Lower churn deactivation. So again, similar uh, on the wireless side, lower churn customers during COVID are, are less likely to call up and cancel. Internet ads have been stable, which is positive. So internet continues to grow. IPTV growth has been lower, lower than expected. And then Bell Media, as you can expect, viewership is up and that includes Crave TV, uh, which is sort of BC's answer to Netflix. Uh, TSN deactivations are minimal despite no live sports. So that's interesting. Customers haven't been quick to, to cancel the, some of the premium channels, uh, particularly with no live content. But what's interesting here, and remember this is about a $3 billion business revenue, 65% of the revenue comes from advertising. So they've got radio stations, they've got the TV assets. And I think it's safe to say that that's gonna be hard hit through the balance of the year. So we got some positives, we got some negatives, and uh, you know, I think you mix them all together and you get, uh, you get lower EPS soup for 2020. I think, uh, and that's what the analysts would say consensus. You know, BC hasn't given guidance, but I think we can expect earnings per share uh, to decrease this year. CapEx is an important part of the story. Uh, so just wanna highlight a few things here. And there's lots of text. I've drawn these big red boxes around most of it. So I don't know how helpful that is. But what I wanna point out here is BC is Canada's largest telecom provider and they're gonna tell you how great they are. But I think there's a lot of truth to that. You know, they've, they've got, um, good coverage, their network reaches 99% of the population, LTE reaches 94%. You see below here, they've been uh, building out the, the all fiber footprint and they've made good progress. They've uh, now reached more than 5.1 million uh, locations. They've largely completed Toronto, but they're still only 53% of their long-term plan. So when you look at this four, billion dollar capex number you can see that wireline which would be that fiber to the home is a big part of it it's the majority of it and what i read through here is this is expected to continue it's not it's not like they're close to being being finished here they with toronto project largely completed we continued our major fiber build out through montreal announced roll roll out into hamilton and other cities and what they do get here is uh they are uh getting some accolades as the fastest inter internet provider in canada so um, a bit of a benefit, you know, being the largest player, they can afford to have the largest CapEx spend. And, uh, you know, maybe that drives um, a better product for the end customer. So CapEx investments here to stay. Uh, and it's an important part of the story. Okay, key considerations for investors. So strengths. Um, we talked about BC's Canada's largest telecom provider and it's in a regulated industry. So they've got scale advantages here. They've also got stable revenue and cash flow with a track record of dividend growth. Tailwinds in wireless and internet usage provide backdrop for future growth. And I think that's one of the things I really like about the story here. You know, when you look at the, the overall consolidated growth, it's, it's not crazy, um, but there's a good macro story here. And uh, we know that, that uh, 5G internet of things could drive increased growth in connected devices. We're on our phones more, we're using more data. And um, ultimately that's gonna increase uh, the importance of BC to their end customers. Risks, there's a few of them as well. Uh, regulated industry can be good, but it can also be bad. Uh, the CRTC um, leads the regulation in, in Canada and there could be unforeseen changes. And I think that's a risk. Second big one, we talked about CapEx and there's significant CapEx investments required to keep up with the latest technology. You know, we're going from 4G to 5G and who knows what comes next, but there will be something. And uh, that can erode shareholder return if it's not managed properly. Thirdly, uh, wireless competition, they're, they're not the only game in town. It's more of an oligopoly. 
Um, but again, as we move towards more unlimited data, there could be some headwinds for ABPU, uh, average billing per user in the short term. And then of course, you've got declines in landlines and cord cutting, which is offsetting some of the stronger growth they're seeing on the internet and wireless side. And lastly, COVID impact on the media business, I think is, is going to be, even though it's their smallest business segment, uh, it's going to be meaningful. Key drivers, so obviously internet, wireless, data usage, all trending in the right direction, up and to the right. Subscriber growth and churn. And uh, again, these are some of the KPIs we talked about. And then ABPU. And lastly, free cash flow conversion and CapEx intensity. So concluding thoughts, you know, BC is a stable blue chip dividend stock in Canada. You know, the growth's not going to get you up out of your chair. Um, but the wireless and internet ads have more than offset the cord cutting and landline erosion. I think that's what's interesting is that you, you got to wonder what happens if they ever sort of got a, a trough in, in the erosion on the cord cutting and the landline. Because that, that growth for wireless and internet is pretty good for a blue chip company uh, like BC. And of course, you've got the tailwinds here that are positive. And we talked about it, you know, largest player in Canada. They've got the advantage of spreading their CapEx dollars across a larger customer base. Heav heavily regulated industry, it's both a strength, um, largely oligopoly, and a risk in terms of potential changes. But I think if 2020 is a one-year COVID dip in earnings or free cash flow, then there's an opportunity here to pick up shares at a relatively attractive normalized valuation. So, you know, normalized basis, this is trading more like at 16 times earnings per share and a close to an 8% free cash flow yield. You get 6% dividend yield with potential for low double digit total returns. So again, if you're looking for the next Shopify, um, you can skip this video, although I told that to you uh, way too late on the video because we're already at the end. Um, but I think it's a nice one, and um, it's an interesting it's an interesting one given what the share price has done uh, amid COVID. Uh, thanks for watching. Happy investing. Don't bury your head in the sand. <laughs>